back. Mm. Oh, that's really odd, brother. They can see and hear us on Facebook just fine, though. Well, hmm. Nope. Well, no, no strikes. Okay, then it's just they don't like us. <laughs> yeah, there ain't no strikes or nothing there. This uh, is proof, Corey, that they don't like us. Oh, we're live now. Oh, it's on now? Mm hmm. All right. There we go. Oh, it's just a little, just a little small hiccup. It'll be all right. We ain't gonna sweat the technique. We're gonna get it moving and make this thing work, right? So, uh, like I said, MAGA had a um I'm I'm gonna let you tell it. So MAGA, what what um let, let, let's go back to this um uh R. Kelly deal mm-hmm. you, when you first met him and how you met him. How did okay. you meet him and, and and where and all that? Give us j- just take it, take it that far and then we go from there. All right. Well, I went out to Chicago to visit a relative of mine's and we went out there just, you know, just to have fun, you know, spend some time with the family. And we went to this thing out there uh, called The Taste. I went over to Waukegan to watch uh, Michael Jordan's sons play basketball. They were at the time like kind of like the teenage ages, uh, getting going into college a little bit, probably, I think. But um, they were they were good. You know, Little League uh, went out to Waukegan, came back spent a little time with my um, family and I, I was at the time I was around um, Star Trek with Pharrell and them. So I had like a different type of persona. I was a skateboard BMX biker type dude. And um, I ran into a photographer and a female friend of mine's that was asked me if I wanted to meet R. Kelly. And this was like 2008 when he just finished the allegations, I believe with uh, Sparkle's niece, if I'm not mistaken. And I was like, um, yeah, I, I don't, I, at the age, I didn't see it. So I was like, I don't believe what's on TV. I'm just like, everybody like, man, they're just trying to set the man up. So I go, um, I get to the studio, you know, and when I walk in the studio, it's just, it's like he has an entourage full of people. It felt like a, a presence of power. Like, that's the first time in a long time I've seen somebody with a structure that just, you know, the hat, the shades, the the no words. And, you know, we had to sit down and, and wait. So once he was done, I guess he had a session with a, a, a R&B f- female. At the time, I didn't know who she was. We waited till she got out. We walked in, and he was like, you know, this guy, this little guy, he's good, man. He makes a little different type of music. At the time, I kind of made, like, the N.E.R.D., Pharrellish type Neptune mm-hmm. records. And I was like, man, you know, um, can I play a couple of records for you? So I played a couple of records for him, and he was like, he's kind of bobbing his head to it, like, oh, this it kind of puts me in the mood of Pharrell a little bit, man. You kind of remind me of like a little kind of skateboard P. So I'm like, yeah, man, this is this is what I'm trying to pursue as a youngster. I mean, I skateboard, I do this, this is the image I want. So he sits back in the chair and he asks for everybody to leave. He says, I want to have a personal talk with him, you know, to see exactly how serious he is. And he was like, what do you, what do you, what do you know about the industry? And I'm like, I mean, just making music. <laughs> You know, all I know is uh, uh, making music in the studio and doing what I love to do. You know, and he was like, well, you 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 seem like you you don't you really don't know the industry. And I was like, well, I make music, sir. You know, at the, all due respect, all I know is the music. And he was like, do you have you ever heard of the Illuminati before? And I was like, no, sir. I, I heard of Col- Columinati from. <laughs> from Tupac, but I never heard yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? but I never heard of Illuminati, you know what I mean? So I tell him I'm like, no, I don't I don't know anything about that, sir. And he's like, Man, you um you sure you want to be in this industry? And I'm like, Yes, this is what I love to do. I love to make music. I love so, to make so music. He, so he flat out called it the Illuminati. Yeah, like, flat out called it just four, straight yeah. Illuminati, like straightforward, like and it was so weird because like I told you, his studio was so you can feel like the energy of power but it was dark it was real real dark in the studio like you know what i'm saying like almost like he didn't i remember i was watching a, um surviving r kelly and it was saying like some of the girls were saying like in the studio where he has like the the bedroom in the back studio area it's the truth he did like and i was thinking the same thing like why does he have a bed <laughs> inside of the um in the studio like i've never seen that like does he want to get romantic in the studio like by himself? yeah yeah like, wait hold on before before we continue i know we did we did get distracted with the um show not working and everything yeah so i think i did forget for you to uh 
I did forget to introduce you. This is um, it, go, go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Tell me a little bit about you. Um, make it make it real. I'm short. Andre Van, formerly known as Maggie Jackson. Uh, just a, a wonderful um, musician that just you know I put my all into my music, man, and just trying to do trying to stay out here and do the right thing and and grow as a person. I've been through a lot of things. Testimonies probably heard about me before, but. It's a fresh start from my brothers, Marlon and Corey. I'm just happy to be here today. Cool. All right. Now, I start, go, go, now start where you left off at. You was you was with, in the studio because she said you didn't introduce him. She wanted to beat me up. I didn't want to. I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So, him he, yeah, yeah. so he got into it and he was like, man, it's, it comes with a lot of, mm. you know, responsibilities of being a musician and everything is not good. He said, I see. You know, I see the influence in you, and I think you can go far. Then he asked me, what is the three doors? And I'm like, man, I'm like, three doors? Like, I'm thinking, you got to remember, I'm 14 years old. So he's like, what do you know about slander, homosexuality, you know what I mean? And basically the sacrifice, you know what I mean? As far as when it comes to sacrificial, like, what do you know about that? And and for me, I just played like, I don't know anything about that. Like, that's that's something I can't really answer. And I'm like, you know, I just say, well, could you let me know what that's about? And he's like, you know, at the at the end of the day, when you're in this industry, you're going to be so certain people going to propose certain things to you. And you have to make a choice in life that if you want to be a celebrity or go through downfalls and i was like you know man um i don't know like i i, I don't i don't know anything about again i don't know nothing about the illuminati so it was very it was very intense to me because it felt like a pressure to me like it was i feel, I feel like i was being pressured as a person as a child because i didn't understand anything that he was telling me and then when he broke it down he went through the doors i was like so i asked him i said so what do you mean by sacrificing it was like, when you sacrifice something, he asked me, when you sacrifice something, what does it mean? I was like, that means you give up something. And he was like, exactly. And he was like, are you, are you a straight person? You know, like, are you, are you, what, what is your, your choice of, do you like women or you like men? I said, I love women, you know? You don't like women, you love them. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like or love, love, like, yeah, like, like, love, love, <laughs> you know? And then he was like, um with the uh slander people go through things he said you see you see what happened to me on tv how they tried to lie to me and say that i touched uh these little girls and tapes and i was like i heard about it but i don't really know too much about the situation so then he started playing his music he put i'm not gonna lie he played me some records that he did for michael one of them was um uh he played the, the past record you were not um you were not alone you know what i mean he played you are not alone and he said that that song was about for a girl named Lizette Martinez. That's what he told me, you know, at the time. I guess, I don't know if they were dating or they were together. And I was like, that's a beautiful song, man. Like, that's one of my, you know, my favorite songs. He was like, yeah. And I was like, man, you know, um, is there any possible way that I can record with you? Like, is any is there any way I can record with you as a kid or get any in insight of you know, just bringing myself to a bigger level because remember I told you at the time I was going to Virginia working with Star Trek with Pharrell, the Neptunes, uh, Malice, Pusha T, the Clips, and everybody else. And he was like, well, listen, before we even do any type of work, I want to let you know how I run things. He said, when you become an artist and you want to be an Eli artist, you have to have your own planet. I said, your own planet? <laughs> what do you mean your own planet? He said, you have to set the norms. And I said, set the norms? Meaning basically everybody abides by your own rules. Meaning that even if anybody goes left or right, it won't matter because you've already established your own work, whether it's politicians, Anybody at the time of, in your circle, you have to set your own norms. And digesting that now, I could see that Robert had a controlling problem. He was very controlling because to tell somebody that at the age of 14 that you to control your own norms and, you know, no matter how you control society and every you put your own rules around you, 
that no matter what, they have to follow those type of rules. And that was a very, for, for me, that made me very uncomfortable as a person because I'm a child. Like, I'm looking at them like, I don't, first of all, this is, this is very aggressive talk. And I understand that's so why I give you the appreciation that you're trying to give me an insight, but you're trying to introduce me to things that seem like they have a, a motive that you're trying to create something behind it. And so I went back and asked them a question again. I said, so could you tell me more about the Illuminati? And I said to him, I said, and he said, listen, when you become, if you become a part of the Illuminati, or somebody asks you to become a part of the Illuminati, do not say anything. Leave from them. Do not answer any questions. Walk away from them. They're going to ask you about those three doors. They're going to ask you about uh, the slander, homosexuality, or sacrifice. And from there, I was able to like vibe out with some of his assistants. I, I don't know. I, believe, I think I'm not sure if um, Sparkle was there. I'm not sure. Like I, she looks real. Like when I look at Sparkle now, I feel like I met Sparkle before. She probably remembers me, but I, I think I met Sparkle. And I like again, I played a couple of more songs from him, and then we left from there. I stayed in touch with him, and you know, like tell him the Illuminati is. I don't know, man. I can't. I can't really say like. I, I didn't take that route. I feel like this. I didn't take that route to become a part of the Illuminati. And so when when he did, did he did he talk about how far he went or anything any um any things in, in detail that he suffered as a result of going through uh, any of the doors? He just told me that he regretted some of the choices that he he made when it came to signing paperwork with his career on top of the people that he chose to be around him the norms as he as he called him is that that was his favorite word the norms the norms that he decided to have around him and he he did things he didn't really tell me exactly if he chose a door but in his small terms he said like i made a decision to better my surroundings for the people around me were you privy at all to any of the, you know, I'm not, I mean, I knew you mentioned the bed. <clears throat> um, and that was an interesting sight, I'm sure. But were you privy in the time frames that you know him to anyone after you had met with him telling you to be careful around him at the age that you were? Well, the photographer, which I, I wish I was going to try to bring him um, on a show, but he was just like, he just don't want to do it because, you know, like he lives in Chicago and it's dangerous for him. But he was saying, like, that you just got to be careful for him because it's very, like, he lives in Chicago. He knows how R. Kelly rolls. Like, he rolls around in nice vehicles, and he he's around younger kids. And even not only younger girls, but younger boys <laughs> in in um the industry. It just wasn't females that his that he had around him. In hindsight, you think he was trying to groom you for something? I feel like it because, you know, me not understanding. Only thing I understood about the studio was get a paper, create, and and make music. I was I was I was learning. I still wasn't a learning experience. A younger producer on my own, trying to make my own way. And I feel like it was questions like you know how you're like, you you try to uh, you like we all had it before. We try to get with a girl, and you like. You know what I'm saying? So you you, you gotta uh so you might even not even ask you, but like um so you gotta you gotta go with your boyfriend later? <laughs> she might oh, so have you, so you pick her ear, a, you pick her ear to try and see what where she at. Yeah, I don't have a boy, where she's I don't at. have a boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend. You know, so one of those type of things that he was trying to do with me, like it was it was like trying to see exactly what I knew if I could get past. I feel like if I would have knew more, then he would have gave me more to to uh to digest and 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 understand you know but since i didn't know so much it was like okay i'm gonna give you hints and i'm 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 gonna tell you do not but he kept on expressing about three three doors and he kept on expressing to me about the norms and that's what i wanted to ask you guys like you know you guys really study like what when he when he asked me about the norms what do you feel like he was trying to like break like give me as far as like news wise like the norms of creating your own world and 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 being able to control it 
and nobody, everybody's going to follow protocol regardless because if they're looked at a different way, then if they, oh, somebody does something wrong, then basically everybody's going to look at them wrong because the norms are already set. Well, that's a simple, it, it just simply means whatever you was taught was right and wrong, forget about it and reestablish it and set it for yourself and don't let nobody intrude in on that. That's your, your own thoughts about what that is. That way you open to um, to whatever, you know what I'm saying? Once he can, if somebody can get you to believe that you can get rid of all your morals, that's what it comes down to, get rid of your morals. And then we we'll give you a new set of morals and you live by that. That's how I take that. Yeah, um, I have a couple of. I'm going to address two things. Um, mm -hmm. One is towards you, and one's to uh, the the audience here. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll address the audience first. Um, the only way you can figure out if anyone's telling the truth is to open your ears and shut your mouth. Like that's one for sure way to here um constantly saying that it's a lie it's a lie it's a lie it's a surefire way not to hear whether or not it's true it's true it's true so you hear the whole story when you heard the story then you make your assessment of what is right or wrong but to chat about it being wrong right off the top just because you feel it's wrong makes you less aware of situations and more inclined to believe any lie because you were looking to hear what you want to hear Mm -hmm. um, at 14, um, it's a vulnerable age. Um, for me at 14, I, I know for a fact I did not have anything set in stone in my mind. Mm -mm. Um, and it was easy for me to believe stuff. And even if someone were to mention the word Illuminati to me and I didn't know what the word Illuminati yeah. meant, I wouldn't go ask you what it meant just because I figured it must be something big and then you're a big dude. I'm going to listen to you. Yeah. Um, after you encountered um, R. Kelly, how long after that point did you start hearing rumors about what he was doing? Or did you hear stuff about him before then? Well, I used to I used to go on this thing called um, LimeWire. I don't know if you guys remember LimeWire. Yeah, Lime I remember LimeWire, yeah. yeah. So I used to download like music for free for LimeWire and stuff. And you know, we, we were in little sneaky little things. We used to do and look at some little things. Mm -hmm. So I seen something that popped up and seen it said R. Kelly sex tape. So I'm like, what? Like, you know, as a kid, like, man, like what R. Kelly sex tape? So I click it open and download it, of course. And I see him urinating on a minor. And it was like, whoa! That, that, that is that is crazy. I want to I want to make a comment about that. So, for him to get away with that on tape, that is different. It's you different. Know, you write on tape doing this stuff like on tape, and a I'm talking about a real life tape. Did, did you ever Did you ever see that tape, Merlin? Uh, no. Okay. Um. I'm going to tell you something. I've seen it, and I'm ashamed to say that I've seen it, but I'm going to be honest. Um, the reason why I looked at it, and I'm being 100% honest, I didn't believe it. Same I didn't, here. I when, didn't believe it. Then. When people were saying that he did that, I was like, man, you got to be crazy. And so the tape was floating around, and people were selling the CDs. And he did it, and it's him. And you, you got to think about it from, like, family growing up, cookouts, different things, like, us growing up. I You couldn't tell me that. Like, it was one of them things where you was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm, you're not. You're just talking crazy. Like, you're, R. Kelly didn't pee on a little girl. And we didn't have podcasting. We didn't have anything else like that back then. We didn't have Instagram and, and, and those type of things that we can access. You know, I barely even had a phone. You know, my, my parents wouldn't even let me have a phone. So... You know, it was like, you know, when I got a chance to see that and I actually got to that 56K modem and cable modem, <laughs> you know what I mean, at the time, mm -hmm. it, it took forever to download. And I had to wait almost 14 hours to see videos and different movies. So when I actually got to see it, it was so it was so disappointing. And I knew from there, I made my decision instead of going because I was supposed to go back to Chicago 
with my godfather to live out there in the south side of Chicago and go work with them. It was a few artists I was supposed to work out with out there. And I made my decision instead of staying in Chicago to go to Virginia and work with uh, the Neptunes and Elusive Media. Because I mean, that's it was the truth in front of my face. And from there, it just started, I started asking more people. It, started, it led me to ask more questions about when I seen the truth with him, like, okay, what is, you know, other people that were my advisors and managers, what is, what is the Illuminati? Until it, until one day, I got addressed for becoming Illuminati, my Illuminati member. And this is where the story gets deep. This is where I, you guys wouldn't expect I was going to admit this, but, oh my gosh, dang, man. But I, in, I, I ended up joining the Illuminati. And, and what happened as a result of that? And how, how did you join? What happened? To, break that down to us. Or did and, I, and did and did you get out? Break the whole thing down to us. Yeah, I, I I got out. So I joined the Illuminati and I had to get a tattoo on the back of my neck, which I'll let you guys like. I don't know if you can see. Tell me if you guys can see it. It's the it's the pyramid on the back of my neck. Could you see it? Come a little bit to the right. Right here. And it'll go backwards towards your door. All right. Back again towards the door and stay right there. All right. I saw it. Back, 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 back. Right there. Is it the one with the stars above it? Yeah. Okay. So I had to get um, the tattoo on the back of my neck and the crown as on the, on, the, on the right side of the pyramid as the golden child. And it was to keep me protected for what my next step was as far as being a entertainment artist so so did you did you see the the sex tape before or after you met him i seen the sex tape after i met him okay i just heard i heard about the sex tape in chicago but everybody around me was like it's lies it's not the truth you know, because everybody was talking about it in school, even kids. You know, you know, you remember that. Like, even kids was talking about it. It was everybody. Oh, that was a big deal. It was in everybody's household. So, you know, I was like, I'm not believing it. And I was on a move, too. Like, I, my, my main thing was, like, how can I be heard? How can I step out and be this artist and be one of these, one of these artists that are heard on a platform, MTV, BET? You know, it was unrealistic to me to even get to that being that skateboarder bmx bike inspired by the pharrell type thing you know what i mean like i was more into the skateboard thing so i know they wasn't back then they wasn't those it only had your loopy fiascos and pharrell's it wasn't really there wasn't no tyler's now and different people asap rockies that and little wayne on the skateboard there was none of that before then and i was around i was i took that style and embedded it I learned it, studied it. So, so, so when you joined the Illuminati, what was promised to you, and, and what happened? Let's let's go from let's talk about that. All right, when I when I joined, it was promised me fame to be around any superstar that I asked, and you had to go from levels. It's it's three levels and three steps. When you get to the three steps, which he he was he was right about it. You have to, uh, you have to choose a door, um, to get out. You know, and I chose the door of slander. And I kind of like, I, you can sort of say, I want to use the word because, you know, people try to use that scam allegation nonsense, but I kind of manipulated my way out of the, the Illuminati by self destructing. You know, self destructing my image that they wanted to rise. Did they approach you in any way, shape, and form by force in order to be, once you were in, to conduct yourself in any kind of sexual manner in the gay lifestyle? It was offered. Was it offered as a ultimatum or an option? It was option. It was it was ultimatums too. It was it was it was it was ultimatums and options. 
and you didn't pick that one. You didn't have to go through that. They didn't force it upon you. How no, long they, were you in? They tried they try to groom me. Like, I've never had anybody. And once again, I don't have nothing against anybody. I don't want to get on here and people like, oh, he's a homophobic or whatever. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? As long as you don't come on to me, I'm cool. You know, but when I went to Hollywood, I went out to Hollywood and these individuals, which I can't speak upon, um, we went to a party. And when I walked in a party, like, I noticed something different. It was very flamboyant and, and very, very happy. I used the word very happy. And I had a lot of, I never had a man come to me and say, like, straight up and go, oh, oh, my God, you're very, 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 very sexy. Like, and to see, the, they, they see my react, they want to see my reactions. You so know. they gauged you. Huh? They gauged you? Yeah, like basically like let's come to this party, let's see how he reacts inside this party. You know, and see if he's gonna go for it. And then it was, you know, showing a lot of money and showing like, oh, this, you know, this guy's his his father, he thinks she, he thinks you're cute over there. His father owns this building right here. That type of stuff. Um so there are people that will say that you haven't really left it because of what you wear, how you dress, what you say, and all that stuff. And you're just trying to hide, and you you are part still of the Illuminati. And this is what an Illuminati person would say to try and tell people that they're not a part of the Illuminati while still being in the Illuminati. And I've heard people say it's not easy to get out. Now, I've whether it's the real deal or not, I have received both inboxes, emails, and phone calls from people claiming to be in the illuminati yes um and the the very first thing they do is offer the idea that you can get what you want when you want it how you want it and i i haven't saved any of the mess most of it came through either whatsapp or in my messenger inbox mm -hmm. um the story goes that you can't just get out so if you've gotten out, what, and I know you said that you kind of tricked your way out, and what exactly was your method of how you got freed from them? And how are they that willing to either let you go or you're not dead even trying to get out? How is that? People because, won't believe that. So Because there's no there's no way of success when, you, when all bridges is burnt. You know, like there, there's, there's never going to be a door open for Andre Van, aka Maga Jackson, Geppetto Jackson, like you see, see that, see that the, the aliases, like it'll never be an open door ever. It'll never be. It'll just be a voice, a reason of of a myth that this man is crazy. You know who, what man gets receives. You gotta understand this. I didn't have any priors. I didn't have nothing. I go to, I take the um. I get arrested on a, a scheme to defraud charge because they said that I didn't have an LLC and self proprietorship. We go back and forth trying to figure out what we're going to come to agreement for in court. Mm -hmm. The money is not raised to pay the quote unquote victim. And when it, you know, at the time, if I would have had an LLC self proprietorship, then I would have been able to be scotch free. From it had been a contract dispute, which me not understanding what was business was. The judge handed me down a five year with 85% sentence in 25 years probation that I'm on right now. So <clears throat> when you when you joined, they obviously gave you something and you had to do something. Um, mm -hmm. can, you talk, can you talk about that? Well, my when they gave me money, I chose. All right, remember I told you it was steps. Mm -hmm. So they they gave me they gave me money, a significant amount of money, and access to everybody, every every celebrity in Hollywood. Marlon, uh, M, uh, Mashante said that he didn't answer. What 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 was the question that that he, that you was or did he answer your question? Um, well, the question really was, what did you have to do to get out? That was one of the questions. Oh, oh, the other one was really, how did you get in? How did, how did I get out? Mm -hmm. I self-destructed. 
they don't want to deal with me because to the public, I'll always be a pariah. Yeah, the Andre Van, the um, the fake Jackson scam artist. And you didn't have to do some of the stuff that the Illuminati normally offers, which is kill somebody, offer somebody's life up, um, bend over, take it, none of that stuff. How is it then that you managed to avoid all of that? Or were you not at the level that most enter in? Do you think they gauge it based on what they, how far they think you can get? Or because it seems I'm, I'm going to be, you know, you know me, I'm a straight shooter. Oh, of course, of course. You're I'm going to I'm going to ask no, the no, questions no. that people are, are wondering. Yes. Um, from all the things we've heard about the Illuminati, they don't one, they don't just let you in willy nilly, and two, they don't let you go willy nilly. Um, case in point, R. Kelly. Um, when you don't want to play ball, even Michael Jackson, you, you don't want to play ball, you die. Anytime you don't yeah. play ball, you die. If you do play ball, you live, and sometimes you get what you want. Um, what did you have to give? to them for them to give to you i had to give them my loyalty like as far as everything had to go through them that's what that's the first stage is the loyalty and the test of grooming you they tried to groom me to be it was the grooming stage it never got to because the, the money was the grooming stage you stay here in the background you come to the meetings, you do exactly what we tell you to do. You don't answer nothing else. You don't control anything. It's the control. They snatch you from, they snatch the control from you. You're, you're, you're mute. You're just a voice mm -hmm. in the studio. That was the first stage. And I gave them that. But when I got to Hollywood and I was able to maneuver and get around other celebrities that had more power that weren't a part of, well, I can't say for sure they weren't a part, but you know, I never know they might have took an oath. But the I'm gonna put it like this. I'm gonna bring it down to you. It's a difference between a I don't want to say too much, a six a six god and a golden child. It's a difference between those two. What's and the difference? A six god is 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 a satanist. A a, go, a golden child is an e like, but has an in to his demise. You know what I mean? It's, it's somebody that they pick and they put you on the highest level that you can be. And that's that's why you see, when they see people, they throw up the six, and I, I'm not throwing, you know, they throw up the six, those are, those are, all of them are, they consider themselves as gods. Awesome. They're their own gods. Okay. Um, one more quick quick statement to the audience. If you are defending R. Kelly, you are just as nasty as him. I just want you to be sure that you're calling him Kells and he shouldn't be talking about R. Kelly. If if you here to defend R. Kelly, <clears throat> something wrong with you. Like <laughs> yes, definitely. something definitely wrong with you and, if you're defending R. Kelly. I don't and, uh, and I bet you we is, shouldn't we shouldn't be talking about him because he's black. Yeah, because yeah. he's black. Like uh, yeah, you seen him in here. It's yeah, always because he's black, you can't talk, or he, but he a nasty man, and people probably nasty too. So defend yeah, them. Them the same nasty clowns that give their daughters to him. Yeah, they probably already did. Especially I, one. I I, I'm looking at one in particular. I'm betting he sold my probably his mom and sister. <laughs> I don't understand why they why it is the problem when I'm here sharing a story. I didn't throw him in the hot water. I just told you what he told me about the Illuminati. Like they're acting like I'm sitting here scorching him, man. Like I said, he try to touch me or something. You know what I mean? I'm giving you the absolute truth. It's, it's, it's them mad because they expected something different. You see what I'm saying? Well, people are but always expecting what they want to hear, which is why yeah. I said what I said. Um, now, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm just making sure people understand that if you're here to defend, because none of us are here to defend R. Kelly's behavior. Um, what he did, he did, and he is deserving of every ounce of jail time. And if you defend his actions by saying it's all a lie, then you are probably just like him. And you are hoping that you could get away with the same stuff he got away with. And you like it. If you are pervert, you see, you see what I'm saying? Look, look, look there. You see, see what I'm saying? Just block her completely, bro. Like, well, kick her completely wait, out. What's her name? It's the Janet lady, that, that perverted, nasty tramp. Just, just block her completely. You ain't gonna come in here 
and insult me and our guests and expect to be treated like a female. You're a hoe at this point and you need to leave. You need to be gone. Um, we ain't in here defending no kind of perverted person that's raping children. And if you are here to defend a child rapist, you're a child rapist too. Plain and simple. Um, exact, right? So when we, when we have people come in to tell you that you've been hearing stuff for a long time, I need, I'd breaking it down on exactly what they say in the background, he <laughs> lying. But meanwhile, you're listening to people that saying the same thing in their songs and you see Rihanna doing the same thing and you see a little homosexual, um, what's his name? LeBron throwing up the same sixes. That's yeah, not I, a problem to believe, I, but what how, people how tell you that it's happening, it's a problem. Uh, uh, that's why I said I can't give them nothing. They're going to they're gonna call me crazy, man. Like I'm about to, That's why I said I'm trying to bring it down for them to understand it. Like we can have a conversation in the background that's, but they won't understand it if I take it to that level because they don't. They wouldn't believe this. You see what I'm saying? So it's like I'm trying to give it to them so that I, they can digest the little piece of steak, take this home with them and learn. You know what I mean? There's a six god and there's a golden child. Pay attention. Pay attention to it. There's a six god and there's a golden child. I just showed you guys my tattoo on the back of my neck. I'm not going to get the Illuminati symbol put on my back of my neck because of this, this is misguided. It's called misguidance. Misguided. What's wrong with this guy? What is wrong with him? So, so have you ever been affiliated with the Masons? I, I, sat, with the, I sat with the Masons. I ate with them. Yeah. I've sat and talked with them too. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, you lying, Corey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I didn't join it or nothing. Um, it didn't sound right to me, and um, that's what I, that's that's what I expressed right then and there. And I said, no, this don't sound right because y'all won't answer my questions. They said they keep telling me that you got to ask the right questions to get the right answer. Okay, well then, how about this? No, <laughs> and I, I, I never, I got approached by three. It was like three times though. I, I declined it every time. So come to me. Question again. Mm -hmm. Um. You said just a second ago that um, if you were to go in even more detail, they definitely won't believe it. Um, mm -hmm. Assuming that they would believe it or mm -hmm. assuming that we don't care if they believe it, because <laughs> if it's right. the truth, it's the truth, right? Can you define for me? I have two questions about the, the, the golden child thing and the six God thing. Mm -hmm. Um. I have heard the term six God before in rap songs, multiple rap songs. And especially by really, really rich ones. Okay. I've heard them mention it before. And I have seen multiple basketball players put it up in the, at least the symbol itself during games, after games, post games and all stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, when, you got initiated as the golden child versus the, the six God. Um, were they bringing you in to a, a set level of what either income or influence, or was that just the initiation phase? Is that like, were you, what did they have an end game for the, the golden child level or, was it just to see how much you would give in to take you to the next level? I just, I asked them, okay, if I be a part of this committee, as a sense of it was broken down to me, this is family. This is a committee. You're, you're going to be honorable. You're going to be honored. I used to use that word a lot. I'm honorable. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got that from them. They groomed that in me. If you already, if you ask anybody that knows me from the back, I used to throw that word around. I'm honorable. Like, who are you talking to? I'm honorable. Like, you know, but... It was like the honorable feel. And they showed me that I was honorable because I was groomed to be very promiscuous because I had to sleep with a lot of popular industry women. And I felt as if that was, that was, you know, at the time they made me feel like that's, this is the superstar. All the girls want you because you're this. And kept on bringing me to these parties, and that's when the alcohol the alcohol came. And luckily, I was strong enough and raised by a wonderful household to not step into the drugs. 
because that's what they plan to. If you notice, every Elite, so to say, this is their thing, that they they have a drug habit. They have a drug habit, and all of a sudden, they're gone because they couldn't control their drug habit. Um, who was the most famous that they had you sleep with? <laughs> Molly, you want me to give that to you? Yeah, yeah, we need names. Drop the names. Just one, the most famous. One? Stacy Dash. The Christian one or before she was Christian? Before. <laughs> did, you, did you have a video somewhere? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, I think I saw something about that on that. Yeah, Stacy. She she a Christian now? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. That's a good thing. Yeah, she's all over the internet <clears throat> with her faith now. Oh. I can believe it. I can believe it. You know, she she got canceled. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she got canceled. And that's a shame. Um, and you know, it had to be something behind that because she's, uh, extremely beautiful, um, really talented and got canceled. I forgot what they say she did. I think it was it what, what are her political views or something like that? Yeah. She was a, she was a, a, a MAGA girl. She yeah. A Trump girl. Yeah. 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 So yeah, she was, she was, um, she was canceled and, and that that was a bad thing. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave that part along. I got some, I got some comments about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I got one more question, if that's okay, Corey. All right, Molly. All good. All good. Um, I had to give it to Molly because Molly, you know, I would have gotten out of you. I would have got it out of you one way or another. I, <laughs> <laughs> I would have got, got dragged it out somehow. Yes, um, if once R. Kelly has been exposed for what he was doing, did they ever try to reach back out to you? either to encourage you to back him up or defend him or to tell you don't say anything at all. I ran into him in Hollywood on, on a Christmas carpet and he recognized me. It was funny. Like it was, I was like, this is different. That's why I started growing my Afro out. Cause my hair was short then too. Like around the time I met him, I had like a low cut waves, but you know, I ran into, it was a very just uncomfortable feel. He was just trying to, is like you know you know a person like now that he knows that I know is like you got you do too much you too jitty what's going on man how you been how you the hugs the the embracement it was too fake like I don't even really know you like that I just you know I got the opportunity to sit in front of you and and hear some weird stuff you know what I mean like I don't I don't really um, we're not we're not friends you know what I mean I was put in front of your photographer who deals with you on a daily basis. And it made me question that I left the photographer alone too. After that, I forgot to tell you guys about that. I left the photographer alone. I never, when I, when I used to go back to fourth to Chicago, I never called him again because I'm like, for you to bring me to the, to him and you're around him the way you are, you take all these photos, you got thousands. I'm talking about, he showed me stuff that people's never seen before, like behind the scenes in his camera of all the photos he's ever took of R Kelly. And you don't know anything about this stuff, but you tried to bring out all this. And he knew more celebrities from Chicago. He could have took me to Kanye West. He did photo shoots for Kanye West. But you, out of all the people you bring me to. That's just as bad, ain't it? Huh? Kanye West just as bad, ain't he? Just as bad. But he's he, he, he not sleeping with no children, though. I don't know. We don't know. You right? We don't know. Yeah, I don't. I really don't. I'm not. I'm not accusing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I'm just saying I don't know what that man. He's a weirdo, and I'm yeah. telling you what he's doing. And, and then you got people that are worshiping him. So uh, I don't know. It our self idolization. Yeah, it's bad, man. So, so what's your plans moving forward, man? My plans is moving forward is taking my big brother's advice, man. Just recreating the image, and just if it's not righteous, I'm not touching it. You know, I'm I'm gonna continue to expose uh the stories that i know on the platform with too strong my my loyalty is to you guys and 
we're gonna we're gonna keep fighting this 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 corrupt industry and i, I hope god protects all of us and and this is what i'm gonna stand on for now on I, i'm not here for like Corey said some wonderful things and um gave me some wonderful advice me and mom always have personal conversations and he's like you know you gotta you gotta take the glove off man you gotta um you gotta you gotta stop trying to be in the image of you know the jacksons you gotta stop being in the image of everybody else and just be andre van and that's what i'm working on like just instead of being who i was groomed to be to just be me that's what i want to be i'm comfortable with just being me now and just to have brothers like you and Marlon, I appreciate you guys for always keeping it honest, honest with me. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So we appreciate you coming on and taking that time. Now my mic, do my mic sound funny, man? No, it sounds good. It's weird as heck. I can't hear it right. But anyway, we appreciate you, man, uh, for taking the time out. I know you uh, just not too long getting out and everything. So that was a struggle. Yes, sir. Yeah, so it's all good, man. We'll we be talking to you again. Maybe we can... Um, Get some good music up out of you one day, you know. Get some, uh, some uh, matter of fact, I, I got a, I got a couple of songs in mind I want to talk to you about. So, all listen, right, <laughs> we appreciate the time. Listen, for, for the people that didn't believe it, don't believe it. For the people that do, then you do. You know what I'm saying? One thing about it is, is, is we do know that it's a lot of stuff going on in the industry, and we got to stop idolizing these people and thinking that they goody two shoes. Like the one girl was going hard for uh, R. Kelly. Like she was sleeping with him when she was three or something. Um, I don't I don't know what was up with that, but it was kind of weird. That's the disease. The disease is that they're so raised off his music like it's a ritual yeah. that through parties that they just don't want to believe. And that's what I the position I was in. It's it's when it's the absolute truth. It's right in front of our face. We sat here and watched the tapes growing up and watched him urinate on these females and these younger girls. Like right in front of our eyes and walk out of the courtroom as a free man yeah so hey don't idolize and wake up before you go to sleep peace we out of here